My first job was a sales assistant at a brokerage firm. So I went through the process, I got my broker's license and I worked. However, I'm really, I'm, I'm just a hippie at heart. I'm a people lover. So I entered that business because I wanted to help people um, gain financial freedom. And once I realized that it was a sales business, I knew that I was a fish out of water. Um, I always did hair on the side from high school, maybe 15 years old on. And at that point, um, maybe five or six years into my career as a sales assistant, I decided to quit and go to cosmetology school. So I just walked away. I love the variety of natural hair and I love people. So my love for people makes me want to help them love themselves. A lot of black women in particular when transitioning from chemically treated hair to natural hair go through a very serious psychological and emotional time. It's a journey. And during that time, they have to accept and embrace what God gave them. This is the hair that grows out of your scalp. So that cannot be changed. So I enjoy helping people to love what they have. The majority of my clients are corporate, um, even the majority of the lock clients. And the key to corporate is professional grooming. It's being polished and even locks can be polished. So that's definitely a misconception and I've blown that one out of the water. <laughs> Another um, misconception I had was that uh, every natural style was Afrocentric and that it was making a statement um, of you know, Pan-Africanism or uh, black power. And that was a misconception that I had in my early 20s. But as I began to embrace natural hair for myself as a lifestyle, um, I saw that it's really more about self-love and self-acceptance. My name is Jamila Sampson, and I am a natural hair care expert and lock specialist and I have been natural for 16 years, and I love it. The reason why I decided to go natural or to start my locks, I was hanging around a lot of um, Rastafarians at the time, and that lifestyle was very intriguing to me, and just learning more about just my roots in general. And um, in that lifestyle really intrigued me to start my locks, and it was the best decision ever made. I'm so excited and so happy about my, my journey. So that's my little bit of my lock story, or my natural story. Awesome. Okay, I'll go next. Um, I never thought I would go natural. I had perms, you know, all throughout my life. And um, after I had my daughter, my hair, hair shed, it shed horribly. And so I was still getting a perm and it just, my hair wouldn't grow in the back, you know. And, and so my hairstylist, she was just like, your hair just won't grow in the back. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna accept that, that it just won't grow. So what I decided to do, I switched hairstylists and then I started to transition, but I didn't like cut it all off. So basically I was just letting it grow out and I was still getting straightened. So I was doing that. So, um, and my hair responded to that. So it started to grow and I did that for years until probably 2016. I just noticed that my hair started thinning from all the pressing and getting it straightened. And you know, I would do that like every two weeks. At one point I was doing it like every week going to get it pressed. Um, so I had short pieces, I had long pieces. And then I just said, I was like, I'm just gonna cut it off. I was like, my hair is not healthy. I don't like the way it looks anymore. It doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. And so I went to my hairdresser and I was just like, just cut it off. And <laughs> she kept saying, are you sure you wanna do this? She said, maybe we can fix it. And I was like, no, I'm, I said, I'm positive. So we, you know, we cut it all off and, you know, but it was straightened. So she had pressed it out and it was really pretty. And then after a week, I just washed it. And then I saw my natural curls and I was like, my curls look great. I was like, why have I been doing this to myself? So I just decided to wear my hair like that. And um, the reaction I got is it's been positive, you know, um, you know, clients and then going back into the corporate environment. Um, with the firm I was working up with, everybody was like, oh my gosh, I love your hair, you cut it. It's like, I like your curls, you know? 
Um, and of course, people ask me, well, why did you cut it? What, you know, what made you decide to cut it off? And I was just like, you know, my hair just wasn't healthy and I just wanted to see what my natural hair looked like. And, um, and it's great. And it's just like, it's low maintenance and I don't think I'll ever go back. Now, I'll, do you, I'll change my hairstyle sometimes and maybe I'll get straight up have braids, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. But this is pretty much how I wear my hair on That's a consistent great. basis. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Can we hear from Lise next? Oh, absolutely. So, hi, everyone. My name is Lise. And um, I guess my natural hair journey really started back in 2007. I was a, a sophomore in college, and I had been reading a lot of blogs. I don't know if you guys remember Naturality. Yeah. It was that yeah. site where women Naturality. would go yeah. in and upload yeah. their yeah. photos. Yeah. And I was so inspired <laughs> by that. And I was just yes. looking at all these women and their hair, and I was like, wait, I think I can do that. I think I can just, you know, take that leap. Because my mom used to perm my hair since I since I can remember, probably five or six, I remember being in that tub. Yes, I remember being in the tub, my mom putting that perm and your scalp just burning. So mm-hmm. I knew, you know, being in college, you know, you're a little rebellious. So I went to a, a barber shop, a local barber shop, and I said, just cut it all off. And she said, are you sure? Like, because <laughs> I had a lot of thick hair. And she was just like, okay, I'll do it. So I cut it off. And when I went to go see my parents, I think subsequently a few weeks later, they were not happy they were not happy at all and so subsequently I had to go back to the perm I was just like you know I don't want to upset my parents I respect them so I'm just going to wear my hair the way that they want me to wear my hair and so I'd always kind of toyed with the idea of going back to having my natural hair because I like the way that it looked on me um, but I was scared about my parents approval I wanted their approval so badly so I fast forward to 20, I think 2013. I was living in New York. I was living in Brooklyn at the time. And if you've ever been to New York, you can get your hair pressed for like $20, $15 wow. easily. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Any any shop, any corner, you can <laughs> wow. find someone who's willing to wash and blow, blow dry your hair for 15 So I got into that, and that was a bad pattern. And I said, you know what? I have got to stop. So 2013, I stopped perming my hair, and I think it was around 2014, I had two friends of mine, they came over to my apartment, one of them took a scissors, another one had scissors, and we just started cutting. Wow. (laughs) And that was it. That was the last time I ever relaxed my hair was 2013, transitioned in 2014. And so as of right now, I've been working in corporate America. I work at a consulting firm. And so I think what has really helped me be successful in working and wearing my natural hair in the environment has been seeing other black women do it. Because a lot of times people are saying, well, what about the culture? Go there and expect the culture. And I'm like, we bring the culture. We don't have to ask them how to bring it. We bring it. So that has been really helpful for me in working in these types of environments. Um, so my um, experience going back natural actually was decades ago. <laughs> it's like, um, actually, um, it was college, freshman year of college, 92, 93. <laughs> and um, I only had a relaxer for about two years, so my family um, throughout my life was pretty much pressing and curling, and then um, probably my sophomore year of high school, I got a relaxer for the first time. Luckily, I had been doing hair since I was a little girl, so most of the time I would braid my hair, and when I went to Howard freshman year, I had my braids in, and when I took my braids out, the relaxer in my natural hair started clumping together, Mm -hmm. and it was like clumping, and it was coming out. Now, um, backstory, I'm from Berkeley, California, and I had been raised kind of (laughs) um, to, you know, there's very much a pro-black culture that I was raised in. Um, I always knew that I was going to lock my hair because I was exposed to, um, you know, reggae music. However, I wasn't expecting it to be at that moment when my hair was clumping together. So my initial reaction was I was actually, you know, in tears because my hair was falling out. Um, I was able to braid my hair, and then I was just like, okay, we're going to do it now. We're going to lock our hair. Um, and so at the time, it was like the 92, 93 era. So kind of like what in the video was during the hip hop movement. We had more brothers at the time that were actually locking their hair like DOS effects and stuff like that. Um, we didn't really have sisters that were locking their hair. But the time was a very receptive time in terms of with my peers with regards to accepting natural hair. Um, interesting enough, I didn't really experience the corporate time you know corporate experiences at that time because I was relatively young but I was working um, retail and interesting um, 
I was denied a position by a black manager, whereas the white managers hired me. Wow. And then fast forward, I ended up having my locks when I moved to Atlanta, you know, after graduation and whatnot. It was like 2001, I was hired by um, a bank. Well, now I'm already bail. <laughs> I'm already <laughs> bail. Um, anyhow, when I got to the human resources, it was a sister who had an issue with my hair. Wow. My hair and the time wow. I was wearing. And luckily, though, the person who hired me from the bank, who was actually the VP over the particular division I was working for, was a black man. He said, she has a, she has a degree from Howard University in finance. And she's gonna come here and do the you know statistics. What does her hair have to do with what she's going to do, right? And so that was the first time. <laughs> yeah. um, and interesting enough, I did see more patterns of the gatekeeping amongst us. Um, and so, and I, you know, at the same time, I had been doing natural hair by this time too. So I understood it though too. I understood that the concern wasn't just so much. Um, it wasn't coming from a negative place per se, but it came from a particular conditioning we had about how we're supposed to present ourselves mm -hmm. and what professional looks like. Right. Um, so luckily in my youth, I didn't, you know, I got to have my locks for a long time before I bumped up against the kind of, um, you know, opposition to having the natural hair. And my family was receptive, so. Mm -hmm. Have you all found that to be common? Um, what Dr. Tara mentioned as this gatekeeping? Mm -hmm. um, because in in my experience i did get the most negative feedback from other black people mm -hmm. in the corporate That's environment mm -hmm. and i was on a um i guess like an entry level um lower position so i wasn't i was i didn't necessarily need autonomy so there weren't levels that i had to cross through mm -hmm. so i didn't necessarily i didn't really experience a lot of it but the negative feedback i got was from my other african-american peers so I think this is something we should discuss because I think it's, I think it's a little shame mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that we that we we place on each other about the concept of what beautiful looks like, what neat looks like, mm -hmm. what groomed looks like, and how we should present ourselves to the others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. 